Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. The first guest of the day is somebody I uh, do Friday nights with on the What's Bruin show. Um, he's a good friend of mine. Dan Wheeler, how are you doing on this Thursday afternoon? Madison, I'm great. Thank you for bringing me on. Yep, and another show we sometimes do together is uh, Derek Felix's Hard Hits show as well. I forgot to include that in the open. So, uh, of course, we got to give uh, that show its shout-out as well. All right, so I have you on today to analyze the unforgettable region of Madison's bracket of glory. I sent you the matchups for the round of 64, and different from the bracket of pain, I'm going to have the um, guests for the bracket of glory guess which way I am leading instead of having them pick what they would do. So that's a little bit different from the bracket of pain. So let's get going right into it. There's a play-in match in your region. It's a battle of 16 seeds. Um, J.R. Smith, you remember J.R. Smith. He's currently on the Lakers. He was a former Nick. He hit two buzzer beaters in the same season, one against the Suns and one against the Bobcats. It's a battle of 16 seeds. Which 16 seed do you think I was more excited over, the one against the Suns or the one against the Bobcats? Uh, I actually took a look at this one. And it was a little more difficult because I wasn't really sure how you would react to either one. Um, based on the Sun situation, it was it was actually both of these games were actually in the same month, um, and this was the second of the two. And um, my my feelings first was with the Suns. Okay. Uh, the Knicks were running, a, just running rampant. They were having a really big winning streak, and this one kept their winning streak going. Um, and it, it was kind of like an up and down game for the Suns. Uh, scored a lot uh, in the third in the third quarter. Um, got things going there, and then Smith hit this game winner. On the other end. The Charlotte game, and of course that one hurts. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, they, uh, it was. I think the biggest moment there in that one was seeing Jordan's reaction at the end. I didn't know whether you would. Um, be like, oh man, we got we got one on Jordan because of all those years of disappointment, unfortunately. But I think if I was a fan, I would be more pumped with the Suns game because because of how good they were playing and how Phoenix wasn't playing well. Uh, they did play a good game, but I feel that keeping that momentum going was had to be a rush. So my pick was the buzzer beater against the Suns. So is that the moment you think that I was more excited over, the Suns over the Bobcats one? Yes. You are correct. I did advance the Suns one, and you were mistaken, Dan. Um, the winning streak... We had a little winning streak going in the Charlotte one, not the, the Suns one, because the Suns one, they were coming off a loss against the Lakers on Christmas, and they were down oh. big, and they came from behind, and then J.R. Smith won it at the buzzer. Carmelo Anthony sat out that game due to an injury. I advanced the Suns one because it was a come-from-behind win. Granted, it was against a bad team. But you know who else is a bad team? The Charlotte Bobcats. And Carmelo Anthony, if I'm not mistaken, played in the Charlotte game. But I'm not um 100% sure about that. But yeah. And the J.R. Smith buzzer beater against the Suns, I don't think stands a chance in this next one. It's one seed, the Giants winning Super Bowl forty two. No, absolutely, it's the Giants winning the Super Bowl over the New England Patriots, who was undefeated at a point. Uh, if for any fan, that would be just the top. So, yeah, that's <laughs> no question. Yep, I advanced the Giants winning Super Bowl forty two. It was probably my favorite moment as a sports fan because the Tyree catch, it was going up against Brady and the Pats. I remember where I was. I was with my friends. I was very, very happy. And the 
Plexigal Burris touchdown catch. Oh my god, I was losing my mind. But yeah, that has to advance to the round of 32. And then the Giants winning Super Bowl 42 will take on the winner of the 8 9 match in the round of 32. 8 seed Roger Clemens unretires versus 9 seed Giants snap Cowboys win streak in 2016. Okay. So. <laughs> I know on the show we talked about the Roger Clemens uh, thing, it, most, mostly because um, of Susan Waldman, of course. Yep. Roger Clemens. But it, um, I actually went with number nine because the Cowboys were on an 11-game winning streak. This win for the Giants brought them two back. Um, and I just felt that, number one, you snapped a really big, a really big winning streak, and it's against a rival, and it kept you guys fighting for that division, so I went with number nine. You are correct. I advanced the nine seed because, for the reasons you mentioned, the big rival in Dallas, fighting for a playoff spot, let alone the division... And snapping an 11-game win streak. And by the way, the other loss that the Cowboys had that season, they were 11-1 going into that game. Week 1 against the Giants, they lost mm -hmm. because um, the receiver, uh, Tyrell Williams, did not step out of bounds. And the Cowboys were out of timeouts. Yeah, I mean, they owned, it, they owned a tiebreaker with that one. So if they could have rallied back from that moment, so that was huge. Yeah, that was big that uh, the, the Cowboys rallied back. They wound up winning the division. Um, the Giants did have a couple losses like throughout the season. They, I know they had a three-game losing streak that year. They lost to the Redskins at home inexplicably. Game there they should have won. Um, a Monday night game against the Vikings. Vikings had a good defense. That's understandable. And then Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. We all know Aaron Rodgers. Um, and, then, uh, they, and then the Giants had a winning streak of their own. They lost to Pittsburgh. I just remember how the season played out by heart because I'm a diehard Giants fan. It's crazy. Um, the 5-12 in the round of 64 in the unforgettable region. The 5 seed, Knicks acquire Carmelo Anthony in 2011. 12 seed, Odell Beckham Jr. catch against the Cowboys. Okay, so that Beckham catch was pretty remarkable when... But it was it was a catch just during the game. It it wasn't like a game winning touchdown or it was just a phenomenal phenomenally unreal catch. But I went with the number five seed, the Knicks getting Carmelo Anthony because at that time the Knicks were really uh, struggling as an organization. They cleared up cap room. They got Amari Stoudemire. And then the Knicks land a guy uh, that, that many feel uh, viewed as a superstar. Um, so for fans, it felt, it, I would think that it feel like um, that the Knicks are turning around at this moment. Yeah, I chose the 5 seed as well. It's funny, when I did this on Twitter, Twitter picked the 12 seed, so uh, Twitter had a big disagreement here. And honestly, the Odell Beckham Jr. catch is one of the more overrated moments of my sports fandom because there's a game where they lost in a season where they went 6-10. and 10. So I think the Odell Beckham Jr. catch is probably the most overrated play of my sports fandom life. So I'm going to advance the Carmelo Anthony acquisition as well. And I was pro-Carmelo Anthony I was so happy when the Knicks got him, and I think that Derek would advance the Knicks acquiring Carmelo as well because he does not like Odell Beckham Jr., but that's another story for another day. So the 413, I think, is a no-brainer. Let's see what um, uh, you would think. Um, the 4 seed, Yankees signed Garrett Cole. 13 seed, Knicks beat Celtics on Christmas Day in 2011. I, I mean, I went with the number four seed because I felt that I felt that uh, the Yankees um, were really struggling pitching wise, trying to find it, and then you get the top pitching prospect out there, and you 
start to feel better about your fishing rotation. So I went with that one. I chose the Yankee signing Garrett Cole, too. And even crazier is that Twitter unanimously voted the Yankee signing Garrett Cole, which says a lot. So I advanced the Yankee signing Garrett Cole, too, for the reasons you mentioned. The Yankees needed an ace on top of their rotation. Luis Severino never has really lived up to expectations outside of a good start in 2018 and a strong finish in 2017. So... They had to sign Garrett Cole, and um, they did it, and um, now we're hopeful that uh, he can lead the Yankees to a championship in this shortened season. Um, the three fourteen matchup in the unforgettable region, the 2017 ALDS Game 5 win in Cleveland against the Indians as your 3 seed, and your 14 seed, Derek Jeter, first pitch home run in his first game off the disabled list. It was against the Rays on a Sunday afternoon in 2013. I went with number three. Um, any playoff game is heightened um, of importance. Uh, this particular one, they beat Cleveland um, to advance on um, to the championship series. Um I think it was 5-2 to two from what I was reading, and they scored a couple runs to ice it in the ninth. So I thought that was a little topper to um, go with that one. I agree with you. It's a 3-14 match for a reason, and DD two homers off of Corey Kluber. It's another one of those I'll never forget where I was games because it was a winner-take-all game five, and the Yankees advanced to face off against the Astros. The six eleven matchup in the round of sixty four, your sixteen, Martin Saint Louis, Mother's Day goal versus the Pittsburgh Penguins, or the eleven seed Tiger Woods wins the two thousand nineteen Masters. Okay. So for this one, um of course I like Saint Louis for other reasons. Um, I'm a Lightning fan, uh, for those who don't know, but um, I actually went with my first, really, I didn't really consider it nine over eight being an upset. This one I do feel is an upset because Tiger Woods win um, was his first major um in ages, so a long time, and it was a very emotional moment uh, for a sports fan. So, for any sports fan, no matter who you liked. So, I went with the 11th seed. So, Twitter agreed with you. Um, I actually advanced the Martin St. Louis Mother's Day goal against the Penguins, so uh, that was your first uh, incorrect pick there. You're doing very well, but that's okay. We're, you were bound mm-hmm. to uh, disagree at or uh, get one wrong at some point. Um, the seven ten, uh, the seven seed Knicks crush the Heat in their first game since after Superstorm Sandy at Madison Square Garden, or the ten seed Evan Longoria walk off home run against the Yankees. The reason why this is on the bracket of glory is because it eliminated the Boston Red Sox from the playoffs, cementing their collapse. And that's exactly why I went with number 10, because any time that your rival can be eliminated is huge. And that was, and um, actually, in uh, Tropicana Field, there is a big plastered thing about that day in particular. It's, It's pretty cool if you ever go to Tropicana Field to see a game uh, there's like a whole wall that goes over what happened in that day I felt that would be more emotional I actually agree with you I took the Evan Longoria walk off home run so that was one that you got correct and upset by the numbers that you got correct there um, I went Longoria for the same reasons yes it was against the Yankees but in fairness the Yankees had the one seed in the American League locked up they had nothing to play for. The Rays had to win that game. 
to at least ensure themselves a wild card spot, coupled with the Red Sox loss to the Orioles. So the Rays were playing for something, the Yankees were not, and it was just a funny moment that happened happened against my team, but it's okay. It eliminated the Boston Red Sox, and the Yankees didn't need that game anyway. So I advanced Evan Longoria over the Knicks um, beating LeBron James in the Miami Heat after Superstorm Sandy. And last but not least in the round of 64 in the unforgettable region, two seed Mark 10 St. Louis overtime goal versus the Canadians in the 2014 Eastern Conference Finals. It was game four. Rangers went up 3-1 in that series at the time against the 15 seed Yankee sign Masahiro Tanaka. I went with obviously number two. I mean, it's a, again, like I mentioned, it's a playoff game, especially the Eastern, Eastern Conference Final matchup. Um, no question, it was number two. It was a two seed for a reason, and I obviously advanced that. Um, I'll never forget where I was for that goal. Um, wonder if Derek was at that game. I gotta ask him next time I talk to him because we talked about this moment. But yeah, Martin St. Louis obviously. It was dealing with the passing of his mother, and then he scores on Mother's Day, which we alluded to earlier. And then the next series scores the game-winning goal in overtime as the Rangers went up 3-1 in that series. And I just remember how that play played out as well, and that was just a fun moment. To the round of 32 we go. Um, one versus nine. One seed Giants win Super Bowl 42 against the nine seed Giants snap Cowboys win streak in 2016. Most obviously the Super Bowl. Yeah, it has to be the Super Bowl. Um, the Super Bowl is just a giant in general in this um, round of, um, or this unforgettable region, let alone each round. I know Brew's going to have a giant coming up in his uh, region that he's doing. He has the 09 Yankees World Series in the region he's doing, the excitement region. So, um, but yeah, got to advance the Super Bowl. All due respect to that 2016 Giants team that kept snapped the Cowboys winning streak, but nothing's better than knocking off Tom Brady and the undefeated New England Patriots. I'm sorry. And then the 5-4 matchup in the round of 32. Five, Yankees acquire Carmelo Anthony versus four-seed Yankees sign Garrett Cole. All right, this, this one was a little more interesting to figure out. Both are dealing with signings. Um, that change that will evolve, that will change or has changed the uh, your teams. Um, you know what? I actually went with number five because I felt, uh, like I stated earlier, that that it changed the the outlook of the New York Knicks basketball team and and you felt for once you were going to bring a competitive team or possibly a team that could win a championship so to me that meant more than getting an elite pitcher um we have a disagreement here i went with garrett cole um this is because the carmelo anthony thing it was fun and um, the end of it just wasn't great. Like, obviously, they did not make the playoffs his last four years or so with the Knicks. So I had to go with Garrett Cole. I feel like that was a much more, like, maybe it's recency bias. Who knows? But um, I decided to go with the Garrett Cole signing over the Knicks acquiring uh, Carmelo Anthony because um, I think that uh, because of how the mellow era with the Knicks ended, and I just know deep in my bones that I think Garrett Cole is going to be the ace that the Yankees have lacked for a long time. So I'm going to go with Garrett Cole. But who knows, maybe I'm wrong all these years later. You, you never know. Um, the 3-6, well, for you, let's just say you advanced Tiger. Um, ALDS Game 5 went over to Indians or Tiger winning the Masters? No matter what, out of those two, I was going to go with... Um, the ALDS game and advanced y'all to the championship series and um, as a fan um, none of those other two moments we're going to touch it yeah I decided to go with 2017 ALDS game 5 over the Mark 10 St. Louis Mother's Day goal because it was a do or die game and obviously they advanced to the ALCS and it's funny because the 
2014 Game 7 win in Pittsburgh is in another region, and that's obviously the same series that Martin St. Louis scored on Mother's Day in. And then the other round of 32 matchup, you have the 10 seed Evan Longoria walk off home run in 2011 to eliminate the Red Sox, and your 2 seed Martin St. Louis overtime goal versus the Canadians in 2014 Eastern Conference Finals. And it's ironic for you because obviously St. Louis, the longtime Lightning player, against the longtime Ray Evan Longoria. Yeah. Um, another no brainer. It's the Santa Lee playoff, uh, Eastern Conference final goal. But you know, there's really more to add to that. I agree with you. I'd advance that as well. All due respect to uh, Longo. Um, but yeah, it was a playoff goal. Went up 3 1 in the series. Um, what else can you say? The Sweet 16, um, for you, um, it was uh, Knicks acquire Carmelo Anthony 5 seed, and then the 1 seed Giants win Super Bowl 42. And then for me, it was Yankee sign Garrett Cole versus Giants win Super Bowl 42. Um, I think we had an agreement here at the 1 seed. Oh, absolutely. No no signing in the world's going to beat. Uh, and I can't state this enough. Them winning the Super Bowl against the undefeated New England Patriots. Can't state that enough. Exactly. And then the other side is, I think, a little bit of a heavyweight. Um... Martin St. Louis overtime goal versus the Canadians in the 2014 Eastern Conference Finals is your two seed, and your three seed, the 2017 ALDS Game 5 win in Cleveland. Okay, this one was probably my hardest one to go with. <laughs> it, was, it, was really, it was really difficult when I was evaluated to the both playoff games, but at the end of the day, I'm picturing this as I'm a fan of the Rangers and I'm a fan of the Yankees in every scenario on this one. So, one of them, the Yankees were pretty much up most of the game. It was a tight game, and then they scored a few runs, and they're advancing to the championship series. Whereas, this playoff game, uh, this hockey playoff game that's, already just very intense enough it's a bit of a championship series and then you go to overtime and you win I, like like for me when uh, Santa Lee hit that goal to, uh, for the Lightning to advance to um, game 7 in overtime that was unreal for me and um I went with the number two seed. I also went with the number two seed because the Rangers wound up winning that series and going to the Stanley Cup final. Meanwhile, on the other side, the Yankees um, did lose in the ALCS, but even though that was a great win, like I said, tough call. But I think the, even though it was a clinching game, but one was in the Eastern Conference Finals and the other was in the Division Round Series. That was the... the uh, the difference for me. And then Twitter actually advanced the 2017 ALDS Game 5 into uh, um, the Elite 8 Regional Final. And then with the last matchup, this would go to the Final Four. Um, one seed Giants win the Super Bowl versus the two seed Martin St. Louis overtime winner. I just don't see in any of your brackets how um, the Super Bowl doesn't win it. I I think on this side is where the championship's going to happen, where the champion's going to happen, because as a sports fan, I, I, I know for me, if Carolina won a Super Bowl, uh, that'd be, God, the top. I, I love my Panthers. I love them to death. And it'd be everything. But it's heightened because of how difficult it was for the Giants to just get into the playoffs, much less go in and beat the monster, undefeated New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. There is, 
there's nothing I can think of as a fan that tops that, even as awesome as an overtime goal in the Eastern Conference Final is. I agree with you. It has to be the Super Bowl because of everything at stake. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, the history of Belichick, used to be on the same coaching staff as Tom Coughlin under Bill Parcells. The Patriots are undefeated. Tom Brady's the MVP. The Giants are a big underdog. I believe they're a 10-point underdog in that game. And they go out there and win the game outright in an absolute classic of a game. And you could argue it was probably one of the best five games in NFL history. That's how strongly I feel about that game because of the stakes and because of all the big names, Manning, Brady, that are involved in the game. So before we go, we'll do a quick rapid-fire segment. We have some breaking news coming in right now. Um, The Big Ten moving to conference-only model for all sports this fall, including football. This is something that George Brew has mentioned on What's Brewing, but he thought that the Big Ten was going to cancel sports, but they're just doing conference-only the schedule for the fall. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I mean, you, you gotta you gotta be cautious in these times, and um, I think that keeping it regional is the smartest thing to do until there's clarity in the situation. Yeah, I don't hate this decision. I think that there's going to be some other schools that are going to go conference only, but I think the SEC will do its non-conference because they have the money to spend to do it. I won't be shocked if the Big 12 does non-conference games as well. The ACC, I won't be shocked if they go the Big 10 model and same for the Pac-12, but who, who knows? I could be wrong. The Ivy League already canceled fall sports, and don't forget the Ivy League was the first league to um, cancel its conference basketball tournaments um, last college basketball season due to COVID. And I said it on my regular show today that the Ivy League is just thinks that, I don't want to sound like rude or anything, but they just think that they're smarter than everybody. But in fairness, they proved to be correct in terms of college basketball because then the Rudy Gobert thing happened and everything shut down. So that kind of did make the Ivy League um, look pretty smart. A couple other quick hits for you as well, so I just wanted to go over the breaking news very quickly. Um, so the four sports, well, there's one sport underway, which is Major League Soccer. Starting in two weeks from today is Major League Baseball. Starting three weeks from today are both the NHL and the NBA. Do you think all four of those sports will finish? Hmm, it's a good call. Um... Yeah, I, I think everything's going to happen. Um, I, um, I mean, with the MLS right now, you're seeing teams, you know, um, um, not going down there due to too many te- uh, too many positive tests. I think Nashville was just on the list. Yeah, Nashville just that- dropped out. Nashville. Um, I don't think it's a big loss for. Um, MLS, I mean, it's not good for that franchise because it's a uh, expansion team, but I don't think it would have been as big of a deal if it was, say, the LA Galaxy or the New York Red Bulls or NYCFC, you know? Right, it's, it's not a big market team, um, so it's, it's not a huge deal, but um, I, I think based on everything I've been seeing, um, with Disney, that they have a pretty good system. Disney does have a great with system. The NBA, um, and of course, soccer's over there. I think with uh, hockey going more uh, regional up in Canada, that it will help. So it'll stay away from um, some hot zones in the United States. And the biggest one to me will be baseball, but it's to me that the season is um, going to be very quick in comparison. And you know, we'll see how that works out. 
but they haven't made any changes to there. Um, but actually, actually, to be honest with you, the NFL is, is my biggest worry because they're even they're selling tickets right now for fans to go to games. So <laughs> and they're expensive as hell. Uh, I, I, I was looking because um, Carolina plays. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers week two figured that'd be okay for that one. You have to go on a waiting list for that one. But oh, yeah. I digress on all of that. Either way, um, I'm going to say they all do finish. I agree with you. I think that they'll all start and they'll all finish. And I think that each um, sports trust their doctors. And instead of the doctors that uh, we've been hearing from on the news, I don't want to mention any names. <laughs> but yeah, I think the leaks trust their doctors and their information with the uh, COVID being a thing now for four months or so. So I think with more information out, I think these leagues are going to be more prepared and more testing and whatnot. And then I do think the NFL will start on time, even though they're cutting the preseason games and whatnot. I do think the NFL regular season will start on time, and my prediction is that um, they're going to let the teams, the states that each team plays in, decide with the organizations on the fans' situation. What do you make of that little prediction for the NFL? Um, well, they're going to have to figure out it's just, it's, I guess it's just a really unclear situation overall. Um, but I don't know, I, I think that sounds good, actually. You think that sounds good? All right. And one last prediction thingy for you. Um, You love NASCAR. I love NASCAR. Give me a pick for Sunday's Cup Series race at Kentucky. Hmm. Oh boy, how many? Uh, I haven't even done my DraftKings thing yet, so I am unclear on that one. But my um, history, but you know, based based on history, um, let's see. You know. Truex is going to be a a um, very interesting person for this race. He's, he won in 2018. He won in 2017. Um, Kyle Busch runs the race well. Uh, Kevin Lasky has two, um, and he was on a hot streak until recently. I have those three who, uh, you know what? I think I'm going to go with Keselowski. I, I think he'll get back to the winner's circle because he's not been exactly up to form lately, and I think Kentucky's just the right place for him. That's a very good pick, my friend. I, I like that pick a lot. I don't know who I'm picking yet, but that's a really good call. I thought about Keselowski. But I really don't know who to go with yet. I guess you'll find out on my regular podcast tomorrow or I'll announce it on What's Brewing. So, Dan, it was a pleasure to have you on today. I'll certainly have you on again at another time. And I look forward to chatting with you tomorrow on What's Brewing. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing me on. Um, Happy I only (laughs) missed two. That's not too bad. Not too bad. All right. Have a good day, Dan. You too.